<laughs> I promise it is. Okay. Ooh. Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Kevin and Mikel. We are back with a new video. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Y'all know I had a great weekend. Shout out to everybody that came to Philadelphia for our Pride weekend. We had another Pride here. And um, I went to Penn's Landing yesterday and it was just a bunch of, you know, gay activities, gay events going on. Philly just basically represented. And they had a gay parade. I've never been to the gay parade on Locust Street, but you know, they shut Philly down yesterday. So shout out to everybody that came in here for that. Um, please make sure you start this video off by clicking the thumbs up button, which is located right below this video. And if you're watching the Scorpion Show for the first time, I hope that you click that subscribe button, which is also below this video, or it's on the top somewhere on this video where you can click the subscribe button. Um, I'm trying to think if I had any, any announcements, but um, please make sure you start this video. I already said that. Come on, Kevin. Okay, yeah. Please make sure you like the official Scorpion Show Facebook page. And if you do not own a Scorpion Show t-shirt, please make sure you head on over to the Scorpion Show Spreadshirt store to get your shirt. And you can click that, click that link, which is also inside the more info box. So um, I want to start this video off by giving a shout out to our girl Tamar Braxton. You know, Tamar gave birth last Thursday to a son. Um, I didn't even think to ask her what was the baby's name. But she did have a boy for all those wanting to know. And, um, you know, her and Vince sounded very happy when I talked to them yesterday. It was like I could hear the joy in their voice that they are finally, it's like, New finally parents. we're parents, mm -hmm. you know. And Tamar, you know, she didn't want to be away from the baby and Vince didn't want to be from the baby. But, you know, they had one somewhere to go eat. So I'm assuming that Miss Evelyn was watching the baby. And, um, you know, I'm just really happy for them. And I know that they're going to be great parents, and hopefully they don't just stop at one. You know, maybe they have another one in a couple years or so, so they can just get it all out the way. And um, what else I wanted to say, um, I watched Breast of Family Values this past Thursday. Did you see it? Um, I can't. Yeah, when they had the baby shower. Yes, yeah. they had the baby shower I party. Remember which one it was, yeah. That was the season finale. They had the baby shower party, and... Um, after that. Oh, Miss Evelyn had a new man and everything. Ooh, she was having fun. <laughs> she had fun with the new man and everything. I was happy for Miss Evelyn. And Miss Tracy had two Money. many drinks. Two many drinks. She said, She told him <laughs> she went off on Miss Evelyn. But she, you know, she said a lot without saying nothing. Mm -hmm. You told me to mind my business, I'm going to mind my business. So she didn't say anything. She wasn't engaging with him at all. But I'm like, come on. This is your mom. Your mom is, you know, she's allowed to go ahead and to talk and date whoever she wanted to date. And you don't have to be disrespectful or mad that your mom is talking to somebody else. Your mom can't stay single forever, you know. Women need a companion, and I say, let her find a companion for herself. Don't sit up there and be rude and mean because you might not know this person, or you don't like that person, or you might be going through something. So, you know, they, they ended the Brexit Family Values with a cliffhanger with Trink, not Trina, Tawanda telling the girls that there might be an illegitimate child from Tracy's husband going outside the marriage and having another baby. Now that's grounds for a divorce. That'll fuck you up. Sorry. Yes. That will that will mess you up finding out. You know that somebody you loved them had another baby. Had a baby by somebody else. So but I wanna know why Tawanda didn't confront Tracy about it. I wanna know why she didn't talk How to did her. I wanna find out. She said she found out about it on the internet, but I haven't seen not one story about that on the internet. Mm -hmm. Now, because anything that the Braxes do, especially when it's gossip or about their husbands, it's news. It's every Sandra Rose didn't even talk about it, so I don't know where the story came from. But you know, I feel bad for Tracy if that's true that you know she got to go through that because you don't have to go through that bullshit. And then I I, I was trying to figure out you know. Where is Trina and Gabe getting a divorce at? I still don't understand where is that because I didn't see any drama with them 
On this, they are, um, and it, it was confirmed that they're getting divorced, right? Yeah, it's, it's confirmed that they're getting divorced. TMZ reported it, and all the other websites talk about it, and Trina never denied it on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So it's like, wow. I'm I, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need to see more drama when they come back this summer because at one point you know every everybody had an issue with Tamar or Tamar had an issue with her sisters and they were all fighting and then everything seemed peaches and cream. Now all of a sudden Tracy don't want her mom to have a new man. Tracy got a uh, a, a step <laughs> stepchild. I don't know what's going on with the braces, but I need to get to the bottom of this. Well, you know what with, with um, Trina and Gabe, it may just be something that has been going on even off cameras that we don't know about mm -hmm. you know what I mean so we probably won't even ever see a riff going on between them on camera yeah but I, I mean I would I would love to see it because I know they were trying to buy a house she should have been left yeah, I mean I don't like for people's relationships to break up I really don't especially if it's a good one but I mean the shit that he was Doing. Talking to the tranny, talking to the other girl on Uvu and telling all the family business, yeah. just the cheating and stuff. Like, they, they really been through a lot. And I thought that they was going to work it out, you know? Because especially when we seen them together, mm -hmm. all lovey dovey. And mm -hmm. she, I'm like, girl, do you know he did this and you? Mm -hmm. And she was like, hey, I'm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, you know, just, just shout out to the Braxes. I know y'all going through a lot, and I hope that Tate Mars um, having a baby has brought joy to everybody right now. Because everybody needs some happiness right now. And y'all be good to your sister and help her out with mommy stuff. Because I ain't got time to stay up late at night talking to her if she called my phone. I mean, I do, but I don't. But uh, <laughs> shout out to Tate Mars. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about L.A. here, because y'all probably do not watch L.A. here. But I don't really get into the salon shows like that. I know you got Jersey Licious, Chicago Licious, all, all of that stuff. But I happen to watch Ella here because, you know, it comes on after the Braxton. And I liked the show last season. And there was a lot of drama going on in the salon. Kim was trying to find a new studio. The mom, you know, the mom was there. The mom now I do a little bit here, but she are. She, uh, she don't really bother no my, nobody. But Kim was trying to find a new manager for the store. And, um... You know, a receptionist, and she she went through a lot of drama, and then she got the girl Angela, who um, Angela basically Angela is kind of like your little si Kim's little sister, even though they're not. So and and Kim tries her best to put up with her as much as she can. Like she don't want to fire her. She she's always very patient with her. She's irritated, but she tolerates it. And um, that's why I said she would never fire her. So anyway, they came back this season. Angela is still doing Angela. She went to set up a meeting with Kim. Kim is a busy person. Kim threw them fucking celebrity heads and everything. And if Kim said, meet me at the damn coffee shop at 2.30, meet me at the coffee shop at 2.30. Don't have me sitting here half an hour late because I got clients to do. She had to do Lisa Ray's hair. So, uh, no, let's see, don't read, don't read. <laughs> so in the process of them trying to figure out if Angela's still going to work I mean, out. I was into the story until yes. you said who she was doing too. Well, okay. Was she going to a white party? <laughs> no. She was doing a shoot for a magazine. Oh, my God. And I guess she was wearing all white. Yes. So the girls, so the girls trying to decide, uh, Angela's trying to decide if she's going to work at the salon. She's talking to the other two people that was there. So all of a sudden, China finds out that, oh, they're meeting at the salon. And China and Angela don't like each other because China got hired as the manager. Wrong. And No, no. China, uh... China Upshaw. No, not China Upshaw. I haven't seen China in so long. Mm -hmm. So um, so China went there and then Angela got drunk. She was drinking. Tried to start a fight with uh, tried to start a fight with China. Almost slapped China in the face. So China was like, fuck it, I'm going. I can't even talk to you about it. But China be starting her shit too. And China got demoted on this episode as a manager. Uh, Kim said, you know what? No, this, this is just not going to work as you being the manager of the new salon. So Kim brought in her sister who looked like Layla Hathaway. So I'm going to just call her Layla Hathaway because I don't know her, new, her real name. So Layla Hathaway is running the salon. Don't really know what she's doing like that. She's just starting fights with the new girl. She uh, Since uh, Kim got the new spot, it's big as shit, 4,000 square feet. She's like, fuck that. I'm going to get nails and I'm going to get a uh, manicure and pedicure thing set up in there. So she hired this celebrity nail assistant who's done Lady Gaga and Beyonce, I think, and all the other girls out there with their nails. So the girl shows up to work. Kim going to tell her, 
Oh, um, I thought you got the email that I wouldn't be ready for you to start this week. And uh, and now I just said, no, you're supposed to give me a phone call. And she said, I'm here to work, so you better make this work. So they running around the salon trying to get things together. It just wasn't working right, but she still, she didn't have the chair. She didn't have shit ready for the girl. My thing is this, Kim, you are Kim Kimball. You do everybody fucking here. Why ain't your damn manicure and all of that set up? You shouldn't know open the shop if you weren't ready to do manicure and pedicures in the salon. That's my thing. And that was very unprofessional to not have that done. But then your sister got all upset and Naja didn't want to help Naja bring the stuff in. She wanted to start fights calling Kim while Kim doing Lisa Ray's hair. It was just a whole lot of drama going on with that shit. But I will say this. I'm going to be watching next week. I need to find out what's this drama going on with China and Angela. I need to know what's going on with Layla Hathaway because Layla Hathaway don't know how to run the salon. That's the problem. People need to stop hiring their family members because their family members are always going to slack at something and not do their damn job right. And then I'm tired of uh, uh, Kim having Anthony run run the salon as a receptionist. Hire a real fucking receptionist. All them receptionists in LA and you want to use a hairstylist? You are wasting this boy talent making him answer phones and set up appointments. Let him do the walk-ins. Let him start somewhere. Stop. I just think he's wasting his talents answering the fucking phone. You're not going to hand me answering phones when I should be doing hair. So, Anthony, you need to figure out what you're going to do. Because I, I don't have time to be sitting there answering phones. But LA Hair comes on now at 9 o'clock on Thursday nights. And I hope y'all get into that show because it's really good. And you know I live for drama in a hair salon because that's all they do. Gossip and fight about dumb stuff. So, I'm going to be uh, watching it again this, th <laughs> this Thursday. Um, and then let's talk about Sierra. Because Sierra over the weekend, she got served papers <laughs> while performing and trying to sing, I'm gonna notice, trying to sing Promise. She was, you know, standing on stage, standing on her breath, just singing. So she's thinking she's gonna, somebody give her a paper or a sign or something. She gets into the shade of what it is, and then she throws it back out to the girl. So the girl's like, oh no, she just got served. She just got served. We got her. So <laughs> they recorded it, right? Yeah, they had it on tape. Uh -huh. They knew what they was doing. Yeah, yeah. So allegedly, because I ain't trying to get sued, Sierra had a show the night before, that Friday night, because she's there for Gay Pride in LA. It says Gay Pride everywhere. Hey. Hey. So, um, so Sierra was was supposed to perform the night before and Sierra's people allegedly claimed that oh we sent you our email. Why is everybody sending emails that Sierra wouldn't be able to come? And so the people lose out because they don't have a headliner for the show. So now um Sierra's performing that Saturday night at a Pride in LA and that's when they sent her the paper. So now they well, go to let me just say everybody sending emails because that's kind of the professional way of doing things. Just in case, because I learned watching the People's Court, because you all know I love watching the People's Court. Yes. Judge Millian always says to somebody, the best way, if you're going to sue somebody and you need evidence, the best way to get evidence is by text message or emails. Because mm. this way you can always have yeah, it on the record. So if somebody says that they didn't get it, you can prove that, look, I did send it. Well, I don't know why they're suing Sierra, but they say, bitch, we're going to sue you. you. Your papers got served. And it was everywhere. I mean, this story was everywhere. They, I so, thought they were suing her because they claimed that she didn't show up. Yeah, because she didn't show up. Yeah. But she's, she's saying that, her she, people saying that, they sent an email saying that they wouldn't be able to make it. But I'm trying to find okay, out why well, would they be able to make it. Yeah, it's only $10,000. Okay. dollars Why you can't go get it? It's not like Sierra has a whole world tour that she's on. No. Yeah. She performed several songs, and she got a check, and she bounced. It's Ellie Pride. So, um, why wouldn't she be able to make it? What was she doing? I don't know. Maybe her plane wasn't be able to make it to LA. What could she have possibly been doing? I don't know. Cause what is she doing now? I'll yes, out I don't know. I don't know. I mean, now if it was a Rihanna or a Beyonce or a Lisa Ray, yes. <laughs> then they would have an excuse <laughs> to be doing something. That would, that would cost a whole lot of money trying to um, get one of them. I mean. Sierra, girl, if you owe them them coins, girls, give them their coins. Because I would sue you, too, if we already paid you before you came and you still didn't show up. Okay. Like, you're not going to collect my damn coin and keep it moving. So they're paying her $10,000? $10,000 to perform. Ten, only $10,000? I know, but only $10,000? That's a like, slap in the face. So I don't know if she's supposed to do a walkthrough and where she was really supposed to perform. $10,000? $10,000. You would think that they would give her at least... $10,000 for some people is a down payment for a car. So they only gave her a down payment on the car? 
I ain't got nothing to do with that. You know, some people, <laughs> some people are getting like twenty thousand. I would some get twenty, twenty five thousand, but only ten thousand. But I mean, that's I mean, I'm sure that's pocket change. And this, is, and this is this is no shade to Sierra. No shade at all. But think about it. Who's buying her albums and her music like that? Nobody. You right. So, but ten thousand. That's almost like I'm Sierra. Like I mean, Sierra can bring a crowd because she's a great performer. So we're only gonna give you ten thousand dollars. And she actually, well, that's probably why she, um, well, I wonder how much L.A. Prime paid her. She probably, she better got a cute She probably got 15. I don't know. But um, to me, it's like, that's, that's chump chain. All I got to do is perform yeah. for 20 minutes. Some artists spend that in like a week. Well, probably yeah. not even a week. Probably a day. Yeah. $10,000. I wonder how much ATL probably paying them people to come do like two songs. Because they always get Fantasia. Or, you now know, that's who I would expect them to pay ten thousand dollars to. <laughs> now they pay ten, pay Fantasia more than they pay Sierra. Then something is wrong. But then again, see, Fantasia can sing. Mm -hmm. But see, Sierra is a performer and she's bigger. Is Sierra even bigger than Fantasia now? Is she? Ooh. Cause it's kind of like Fantasia's a great. No, singer. no, because Fantasia's so like. A hundred thousand copies. See, every last album only sold thirty-five thousand. Oh, so yeah. Fantasia is actually more popular, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Wow. So I can't <laughs> believe it. Oh, wow. But, I mean, I can't believe it. Man. I can't believe. Yeah. She's a fucking singer. So right. And so Sierra, baby girl, get your law, get your lawyers, get lawyered up, and do what you gotta do. Or get what's the, who's or get them at their money. Future. Yeah. yeah future. Future, get future. Got it. Pay them. Yeah. Okay. Because the two of y'all walking down the street, future and past. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got to give a shout out to Serena Williams too. Because Serena Williams won her 16th Grand Slam Yay. at the French Open. This was her first... Uh, <laughs> this was her first Grand Slam. And how, did you see that picture? <laughs> What's the name posted with Bow Down Beyonce coming out? Who? Beyonce. <laughs> the, taking that picture out of no... No, of uh, Serena Williams. What? About after she won. She Who posted like, about him? Serena? <laughs> he's like you threw me off, like, bitch. He's like an 80-year-old woman. Stop it. <laughs> anyway, Serena Williams won her first Grand Slam <laughs> in 11 <laughs> years at the French <laughs> Open. So shout out to Serena Williams for that. And not only that, Serena Williams <laughs> is the first black singer. I mean, first Sing black. <laughs> Shut up. Damn. The first black tennis player to win at least two Grand Slams. Um, championships from all the Grand Slams. So shout out to her. Life. 16, so keep doing it. Sing it. And um, <laughs> try it. Because you're talking about Beyonce. Wait a minute. Beyonce no, song? it's Beyonce. Child. <laughs> Go ahead. Because Beyonce did write a letter. No, she she is forever writing a letter to somebody. <laughs> Write a letter to the Scorpion show. Write a letter to the Scorpion <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which we will go in on in a little bit. Which we will. I think I'll turn this light off. Now, that's what they should have had. Yeah. Um, instead of Diane. Should have got them together. So, um. <laughs> and they would have known who she was. Because they ain't have a clue who Diane Sawyer was. So, Chad Johnson. <laughs> They just showed the what's his name on there too. Right. I wanted to hear they show when he smacked that guy's butt. Yeah, yeah. Chad Johnson's going to jail for 30 days. Because Chad, Chad Johnson <laughs> accepted a plea deal. I heard you. I heard you. <laughs> Chad Johnson accepted a plea deal. Well, see, he likes to So where he don't, uh, <laughs> he wouldn't have. Like that. <laughs> oh, I don't. I'm trying to, I'm trying to start. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. There I go being insensitive again. <laughs> Go ahead. You were that day. Don't no, say that. Was not yes, being that so it was a spur of the moment thing, and by you right. saying that, then everybody, oh, he is so insensitive. I can't stand that. Don't be mad. It's just no. I wasn't mad. I had a blessed weekend. I'm, I'm glad you did. I was not mad. We all had a great weekend. And I got paid this past week, so you know I wasn't mad. I got paid Praise twice. him. Thank you, Jesus. Glory so, to His name. So Chad Johnson is checks. going to jail for 30 days. For slapping his lawyer on the ass in um, in court, and he got he the the judge thought of it as an insult because you know she's asking is there anything else or whatever, and you know anything else y'all would like to say, and he just slapped the lawyer on the ass, and then he started laughing, they so she did. wasn't yeah, so she wasn't here for that. She so said, you know what, you I'm gonna send you to 30 days in jail. Um, the the plea deal is off the table because. He was um, trying to not go to jail for assaulting Evelyn Lozada. That's what so, that was for? Yeah, so he was going for going to do community service, and he was going to go to a, uh, what kind of class you call it? 
uh, like an anger management class, and he also had three months probation. So that all, all that shit got thrown out the window. She told him to go to jail for 30 days. Now, my thing is this. When you are in court, you are always supposed to be professional. Ain't no time to be laughing and smiling and shit. Just go there and do what you got to do. You accepted the plea deal. You accepted what, you know, what you're going to do. And just go ahead about your business. You don't got time to be slapping lawyers in the ass, giving shout outs to your family members and all of that. You are in court. And they will change their mind just like that. Get your ass together. So, um... So Chad, you know, I hope you enjoy your 30 days in jail, baby. I don't got time. Yeah, hopefully don't nobody go slap in his ass. Yeah, ooh. <laughs> he'll probably get special treatment in there. Oh, yeah, he will. He'll, he'll, he'll get, and they probably won't even, ha maybe he won't even have to do the full 30 days. Okay. Which is so weird because if, if he got to go to jail for 30 days, why is it so hard to send people like Lindsay Lohan to jail? Put her ass in Jail, jail. <laughs> Stop not sending her to these <laughs> special, yeah. uh, what do you call Betty it? Betty like, Ford clinics and all of that shit. <laughs> no. <try> no. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Well, she does need to go to the Betty Ford clinic because she has a problem. But I think she's been there before. Amanda Bynes needs to go there, too. Oh, she needs a psychiatrist. No, she's treatment. been there before probably for her addiction to whatever she's addicted to. Now they sent her ass to jail. Amanda Bynes? No. No. No, they need to send her to friends. Oh no! They seven oh two her, three oh two her. They do. She always tweeting and not untweeting it like, goodbye. Look at them. What is going on? The hero cop murder wife. Look. Look. Oh, and they tased him while he was on the ground. Look at his face. Look at his face. <laughs> That's a lawsuit. Look. His tongue ran rolled in the back of his tongue mouth. Did you see that? I, I can only wonder what she's talking about. <laughs> Did you see how his tongue ran in the back of his mouth? He's a... Is he still talking? He's still talking. <laughs> no, he's trying to get conscious. Hurry, <laughs> hurry. I, I think she's dead. I think she shot herself. So who was that man that just threw in the crowd? Well. I don't know. But, um... Speaking of trials, George Zimmerman is on trial right now. Um, right now they're doing a jury selection process where they're interviewing a hundred people. They ain't interviewing me. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I wouldn't got time to be on that case. I do. I, I, I just would quit my job so fast. And move to, uh, and <laughs> yes, move I would. Now. You know why? Because I got something to say. <laughs> no, I think they, they wouldn't even put me on there anyway. <laughs> they they would have been like, um, you have a YouTube show, and I'm pretty sure you talked about it, and you made up your mind no, about they it. Would, they would ask me, do you, are you in the public field? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you publicly? No. Okay. But they were saying that some people are actually, um, I get a mustache and a toupee in a minute. People are lying just to get on the case or mm -hmm. act like they never heard of it. Everybody that heard about this Trayvon Martin story, I don't, if you lived in Florida, how do you not hear about it in Seminole County? How do you not know about it? That's what I'm trying to understand. Because they're lying. Yeah, they want to, everybody want to get on this case. Go so, on. um, you know, I don't even, I just want to say to the family, like, just good luck to y'all. Please don't go in there thinking that y'all got this because I don't want y'all to be looking salty outside the court. Just ask everyone to keep praying for you guys, and that's the best that you can do. The lawyers, Trayvon Martin's, not Trayvon Martin's, George Zimmerman's lawyer is trying to get all kinds of words thrown out. They're trying to use different kind of videos. They're just trying to do so much to portray Trayvon Martin as this thug, which I don't care about. Well, all I care about is what happened that night. But I it's not even that I, I'm sorry to cut you off. Not that I don't care about, but I don't understand why they're trying to portray him as this. If he was walking back to his father's house and George Zimmer, Zimmerman started to follow him. Like, what ensued after that whole following? Now, this is how I look at it. If Trayvon Martin hit George Zimmerman first, whatever the case may be, people, my dad always taught me when I was young, when you were walking down the street, you should always look behind you. You should make it a habit of looking behind you, behind you, because you never know who's walking behind you. You never know who's following you. And I think with Trayvon Martin, he's probably realized that this man is following him. He didn't know what this man was. He didn't know what this man was capable of doing. He didn't know what this man had. Clearly, now we know what the man had, had a gun. Mm -hmm. But he didn't know that. And so he probably started to get nervous and scared. Like, well, what the fuck is this man following me for? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, and, and I'm not, I'm, I'm so confused at why George Zimmerman's team is trying to paint 
Trayvon as a bad guy as if Trayvon was following Because that's what they got to do. I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm understanding that they got to make him look bad and make it look like he was justified in this killing. I don't give a fuck what kind of person Trayvon Martin was before that happened. You cannot go around just profiling people because they're black and wearing a hoodie. Mm -hmm. Thinking that they're out to rob people. I don't give a fuck how many times something got robbed in your neighborhood. If you seen something, you should have called the cops and left it alone. They told you, do not follow him. Stay in the car. Imagine how your life would be if you never would have got out that car. Mm -hmm. right. You would not be going through this situation. And then again, you're not trustworthy because you had your wife lie mm -hmm. about how much money y'all actually got mm -hmm. from the racist people that donated that money to mm -hmm. your ass. Mm -hmm. See, I ain't fucking stupid. I know what's going on. And you don't want no black people on the trial because you don't want no black people to tell the jury. They know how it feels to be um, uh -huh. profiled to Come wear on. a hoodie Come or on. to be black and be looked at funny because you're in a white neighborhood. Mm. Come on. Mm. So, it's too much going on. <laughs> but not enough. Not enough. Not enough people stepping up and just... Mm -hmm. Come on! I see what's going on. You're trying to paint him as a bad person. You're trying to justify that man for killing him. And you know what? That motherfucker is a liar. Because one time he said to the, um, on the 911 tape, he was saying he's a young guy. And um, he described Tamar. Tamar. He described. <laughs> he described Trayvon down. And then he lied to uh, Trayvon's family, telling him, oh, I didn't know how old he was. I thought he was around my age. When clearly you told the 911 dispatcher he was a teenager. So you're lying again. So I'm not here for uh, George Zimmerman. And fuck his brother too. And I hope. Because I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I hope his ass get convicted. You can't be going around killing people just because they're black. And they're just because you in your neighborhood. To. Yeah, because you want to be a fucking cop. You want to be a vigilante. You want to save your neighborhood. Bye, girl. So, um, on that note, I want to know, are y'all buying Kelly Rowland's album next week? Um, I need y'all to keep y'all fingers crossed because I got in contact with the people on who I'm supposed to get in contact with. So, hopefully this interview is really going to go down. But I want to know, are y'all going to buy the album? Because the album comes out next week. Now, Kelly's been making some noise on, her, on Twitter. She's been tweeting about it and everything, but I have not seen the commercials. I haven't seen her on BET. I haven't seen Kisses Down Low or Dirty Laundry. I don't know where this video is at. I'm just a little bit concerned. Even though she's got her little interviews lined up, she's doing some shows tonight on um, Jimmy. Was it Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel for Wiz Khalifa? She released a new song, but I think. I don't think the hype is like... So this is the third song from the album? The third song, and, and most likely it's a single. Because Dirty Laundry... Dirty Laundry, if she would release the video, what is taking the video so long, it probably could have had more of an impact if that video was out. Because we heard the song. Where's the visual? I don't see the visual. So I'm nervous on how many numbers this album is going to do. Are you are you concerned at all, or are you just like... I like her new song, Gone, but... yeah. I mean, you gotta. It's you something gotta ain't right in the if you promo ain't concerned, department. then I can't be concerned. If something ain't right in that promo department, I don't know. You say this every time she comes out with the album. Yeah, cause cause and I, you are always right. Something ain't right. So maybe you should quit the Scorpion show, <laughs> let me take over, and you go and work for her. Cause I'm sure she would have better promo with you working for her. Well, I don't need to work for her, but I do think that uh, I, I wouldn't quit the show. But I do think that I need to, uh, I do think that I, I'm missing my call and I ain't in my right field. Oh. I do, I do, I think that. I <laughs> Can you imagine me as an a and no. I would be, I can't imagine. I would be the real a and because I know what the people want. <laughs> what is it? I know what the people what want. What they want, Big Daddy? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> They just, look, the fans, if you ain't here for your fans, your fans ain't going to be here for you. That's right. If you playing around with your fans, 
The fans ain't gonna I, play back. I, they ain't got time. I'm not saying nothing, but mother always. They ain't, they ain't got time. Want. She, uh, she ain't giving the girls what they want. I said she always gives me oh, what she I want. want. Oh, cause she I'm fooled, not talking about the girls. Uh, she fooled the girls. No, she, she had did. The, she, see, but she, she see, didn't fool me. See, she had the girls thinking, <laughs> oh, I'm going on tour and I got new music. Yeah, the she girls did. Gagged and guess what? When they got the damn, but you know what? Got she City did show. what? She was that was shady as shit. What she did. Yeah. But guess what? She got those go- girls coins. Cause it was already it was so they're already after the fact. <laughs> yeah, it's after already after the fact. She said, "Oops, by the way, no, 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 music. Okay. no music." And then I'm not gonna start singing two of my new songs until a month the after end. the show starts. Girl, <laughs> she tried. What? See, something ain't right. Now she's performing in the video for Grown Woman is coming out in a few weeks. Are you fruit weeks? That should have been came out. Well, I mean, when's when's the twenty six? Yeah, like two weeks. Yeah. It's around the time of the BET Awards. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, come on, uh, you know my mother's promo is always. So, when I have been, I have been coming out. They said later this year. I know you know that. No, I don't know. Okay. When's so, Kelly's album coming out? Next Tuesday. All right. Well, I'll then win. every day the you should promote it. I don't know, my job. I don't get paid to do that. I just ask the girls. I'm just, oh, they gonna get it. I'm just saying, you you said she was giving you shout outs on radio shows and things. She did give us a shout out, and I waited well, you for said that. you, oh, so yeah. then you should sure promote her. <laughs> so then you should promote her. No! Get on your Twitter and promote her. I will, I will promote the album by giving the album a review. You never and know. telling the girls to get it, because I am a Rolling Stone. And I do want people to get the album, but I ain't gonna be like, yeah, y'all got to buy, y'all should buy. No, and anybody say like, y'all got to buy, but I'm saying, yeah. you, it's nothing with every hour on the hour saying Kelly Rowland's new album is coming out. <laughs> that's what I did. That's what I did with, um, <laughs> when 4 came out. I sure did. I didn't tell people that they had to buy it. I just said Beyonce's new album is coming out this day. Beyonce's new album is coming out in two days. That's what you do. I didn't say, oh, you need to buy it. No. And there's nothing wrong with fans doing that. It yeah. helps. And then you one of her most biggest I, fans. I am. But yeah. I, I, you never know. That promo may actually get her on the show a little bit quicker. She knows. That. <laughs> no. I can't. Listen. That ain't. Look, I, you know I love Kelly, but she's not Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson would be the one I would do that. Janet before. Jackson is not even Janet Jackson. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so no. Would you, would you help um, promote Kelly's album? I, I I love that I'll help promote this new song, Go On. Go on, I do like I that. I like that song. Mm-hmm. I'll definitely help promote that. Yeah, she told I'm me. I'm not a big fan of Dirty Laundry. It's I like it, but I'm not a big fan of it. I like Kisses Down Low, too. But I, I mean, love Kisses Down Low. It, it could have been bigger than what it yeah. was. I don't know what happened. I forgot all about Kisses Down Low until you just mentioned it. Yeah. Because it came out months ago. And then just the video came out and... Mono Park don't even get her in the I've never seen her perform, like, perform it. And everybody's on Mono Sister Park. Even those mm-hmm. horrible... She can sit down with Bow Wow says Bow Wow claim it's his show now. He said he got his own TV show now. Is that what he said? Yes, he put it on Instagram. Oh! So they fired those other three. I guess so. They got rid of them. That's who they gave it. Walking paper. But see, who, how was the ratings doing anyway? Like, I don't, I don't know. First of all, Bow Wow, I mean, it's cute that you got your own show, but I mean, really, is that something really you would want to brag about, being as though you started out as this... Big time rap, rapper, yeah. Man, look at you. Brag about getting a new platinum album. How about that? The girls is not into him like that no more. No. Mm-hmm. He's just something good to look at. And then he's, but to me, he's not even all that good to, I mean, he's a nice face, but he has the body of a 13 year old. Mm-hmm. And I can't get jiggy with that. I can't get jiggy with nobody who looks like a child in the bedroom. That don't turn me on. That makes me feel like I'm better. Maybe he might not have a child thing in the I don't. I didn't say nothing about <laughs> yeah, I'm that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, because we know. No. <laughs> Don't go there. I went yeah, there. Yes. <laughs> so let me know because I want to know if y'all gonna buy it. Also, we're gonna we're gonna talk about some Philadelphia stuff because start with the crane operator. Yeah, we're gonna start with the crane operator, the fall guy, and the uh, escape fucking goat. <laughs> Michael, not a scapegoat. Yes. Michael, I need to be uh, what do you call it? Impeach Nutter, who's mm. the mayor of this city. Yes. He. We just had we had a catastrophe last week here. Where a building collapsed, and to another building, and then the, and that building collapsed onto the Salvation Army thrift store, and and that collapsing, the the whole building, not whole building, but most of the building collapsed, and some of the workers that were in there died from it, and six people died, fourteen people were injured, and you know it was a big thing, it was on the news all day here, and you know they was trying to get down to the bottom of how did it happen. 
Next thing I know, all I know is they looking for one of the crane operators saying that he had marijuana in his system. Now first, keep talking. You know I'm yeah. starting to get mad. So they're saying he had marijuana in his system, which to me, it doesn't matter if he had marijuana yeah. in his system or not. What matters is was he high during that thing. But then I found right. out that he wasn't even working that day <laughs> where it happened. He wasn't even working. So why were they that. looking for him? And then on top of that, how would they even know that he had it in his system unless, if y'all knew that he had it in the system, that means that whoever was in charge that they let him go to work with marijuana. But this is what I'm not understanding. They're making this guy out to be a scapegoat because now all of a sudden, a week after this tragedy, all you hear is his name. Mm -hmm. The mayor's talking about him. The police are talking about him. The media's talking about him. They're trying to figure out was he responsible or was he intoxicated when he was using the crane, this, that, and the third. And I'm thinking like, these people are trying, well, this, the city officials are trying so hard to get the attention off of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're trying so hard because, you know, the people who were injured, who survived, you know, they sued. One of the women went to the hospital and called her lawyer and filed papers right there in the hospital. I said, you need to get your life. They was, they was ready. The next day, what? they said, oh, we're suing the city of Philadelphia. Come on! And blah, 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 blah. And her lawyer was out there. Okay. Out there, ready for press. Ready okay. for the money. I'm here. Which camera am I looking at? Yes. The and money you know, ones. And more people joined in on the law. They are going to get money. Okay. You know, I had a good mind to go down there and throw a brick at my head. Mm, and, so and, and then one of the girls. Girls, then, one I am the, broke. then one of the girls was saying, uh, one of the girls saying that she kept hearing bricks falling anyway before it even happened. One of the workers that was in there. But my thing is, if you know bricks was falling, why didn't you say nothing to somebody? But you know what? Let me just say this. Okay, I'm gonna be fair. She, which I, I'm, I'm assuming that while she was in the Salvation Army, mm -hmm. they probably heard the bricks falling on the roof because the Salvation Army was one story. Yeah, yeah. They probably heard the bricks falling on the roof. Naturally, being as though right next door they're demolishing this apartment building, they probably didn't think that it was something major. They probably just thought, okay, it was like a falling brick every once in a while that you hear mm -hmm. on. So they probably didn't think anything of it, especially not to think that, oh, oh my God, this building's about to collapse. Because yeah. I'm sure they did think that they wouldn't have went the hell inside, or maybe they would have just to collect some money. I mean, you never know. If I if I was if somebody would have pointed to me where I would be the most safe at. You damn right, I would have went in there and I would have been walking out $10,000 richer. Hey, Sierra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. oh, you would get more than that. Oh, okay. More. We talking millions okay. of dollars. Dollars, okay? City of Philadelphia, y'all cannot push this on that one man. motherfucking man. Y'all had to do what y'all supposed to do. I know Ellen and I probably had something to do with this. Y'all proved that this uh these people working on there. Y'all probably granted them the permit. Don't try to put it on one person because they um high off marijuana. No, if he was high off marijuana, I can see. But I be no, around people that smoke weed and I know that they still function very well whether they off the marijuana no, or but they not, said they off the marijuana. Not just marijuana, but Pres pain, prescription, pain, medicine. No, they're not going to put it on and one person. Then, then the media had the nerves to bring up this guy's past. Um, oh, oh, all his fans, drug oh, convictions, and everything. Oh, like, that. they went. Mind you, I read this on CNN's website, so you know it got big. See, so they trying to really dig this man in the dirt. Yeah, it's, and it's not fair. No. It's not fair at all. It's it, I, it's, it's just no way. And where are you going to have the money to, if they sue yeah. him yeah. to pay these money? you imagine that? That poor man. Yeah, I feel I feel sorry for the lady that um, lost her husband. She was like, I loved him, but God loved him best. You could tell she was black, wasn't she? Yep, because that's you something a black that person would say. They was from another country. Yeah. Um, they they I don't know either from an island or from Africa. They were somewhere. Um, but that's a thing. Yeah, it, it's just sad that you know that our city has to go through this, but they try and put it on one person. Yeah, like be responsible. Listen. The people that hired him knew they was wrong hiring him. When you look at his uh, felony and drug thing, you know, you, you know who you hire. You probably thought you can get him to do it for a couple of dollars cheaper. But everybody is responsible well, for Well, apparently this. he knew what he was doing if he was operating the crane. Yeah. Because that ain't like operating no damn scooter mm -hmm. or lawnmower. That's a damn crane where he's knocking down buildings. Yeah, but Come they, on now. But I don't know how it fell with nobody operating it. Maybe it was just weak and it fell. Well, remember the guy on C on on six channel six said that he the day before the he took it, pictures yeah. because he said the day before looking out his apartment window the building looked like it was unstable and so he took pictures and then here we go the next day that shit collapsed. Yeah, but, but see if I know something ain't right, 
I will call the police and say something. And like, I like when, uh, like, you know, I watch Fox 29. They will, uh, you call Fox 29 and tell them something's going on in your block. Fox 29 come out there, they call the city, the city out there in 20 minutes mm -hmm. to fix whatever problem the fuck mm -hmm. was going on. So if you knew that this building did not look right, it didn't, it was leaning wrong, or the pole didn't look right, why couldn't you say something to somebody and you could have saved people lives? That's true. I, I just don't get that because if I see something, I'm definitely saying something. You got water running. People need water. Call the damn city. They turn this water off. This guy was living in my on my cousin's block around the corner from here. This older man living in the house with no running water. I don't know. I can't do that. My cousins said they started to smell through the walls. <coughs> they went in there. And mind you, he had a woman. He was an older man. Had a woman coming in there. A younger woman. For the cash. My cousin went in there because my cousin said she's a trip. They went in there. Excuse me. <laughs> you just said chills in my There heart. was shit. Everywhere. In buckets. Shit in the toilet. Because there was no running water. You can... I can't even imagine how that house must have smelled when you start smelling it through your own walls. I'm calling everybody. I'm ready to pick up that one. I'm calling L, L and I. I'm calling DHS. And they ain't even no kids in there. I'm calling them. I'm calling every damn body. I'm calling the SPCA. I'm calling State Farm. I'm calling Sloman Shield. I'm calling every damn body. Because this is a travesty. First of all, why is this man in this house with no running water? Why are you peeing in buckets and pissing in buckets? Pissing and peeing? To shit. shit. That's what I meant to say. Shitting in buckets. Like you know, people live like that. They do. People live like that. This lady on my block, this elderly woman on my block, Miss Ida, she had, she was in her 80s at the time when she was on our block, and she would get the meals on wheels delivered to her house, but they would deliver food to the elderly people. Miss Ida was always the type that never really, she would come to her front door and stand in the door like in a screen door, but she would always keep her front door behind her and then she, you know, closed or she sat on the porch, you know, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. So one night, me and my cousin came home and her front door was wide open. And mind you, this is like after 9 o'clock and I'm like, this woman is in her 80s, she don't usually keep a door open. So let me go knock on the door and make sure she's all right. Child, when I got <laughs> on that porch and looked into her living room, I think every food carton that she had consumed was on her floor. But that is not what got me? <laughs> the mice that were running all around in that um, living room. It was so horrible. Then we called the cops because we kept banging on her door and she didn't come down. So we called the cops and they had to break the screen door in to go in there. Mind you, she was in there alive, thank God. Mm -hmm. But the whole time she was upstairs in the back room with the TV up loud and she didn't hear. And the cops said that when he went in there, she, you know, he saw her sitting there. Mind you, the whole time she was sitting there, she had a stroke. Mm -hmm. Yep, she had a stroke and didn't even know she had a stroke. And mm -hmm. like a like a week or, like a week after that, her family had came because she didn't have no kids and nothing like that. Her family came and put her into a nursing home. Mind you, she had no relatives in Philly. They all lived in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And oh, the wow. reason why she lived in that house because that was the house she grew up in with her parents. Yeah, and so true. you know she just what's her name? But she had a stroke that night and she was sitting there and did, you know that's why some people when they have strokes they don't know that they have. Mm -hmm. But it was just so. Where am I going with this story? What no, were we talking just, about? We just were talking oh, about just what? Just met, yeah, yeah, I almost forgot what I'm talking about. But yeah, it was just a mess how people lived like that. Like it was just, it was almost as if like, and she was able, like it wasn't like Miss Ida was the type that needed help. She was able, like she was an 80 something year old functioning woman. But it was like, what you got no trash cans in your house? She just threw all the stuff on the floor. But you got, you yeah, got the shows like, uh, Porters. Porters. Yeah. If the living room looked like that, I can't even imagine what the rest of the house looked like. I never went in the house, but I just saw the living room. So but I'm glad she was on. Is she know she saw that every day? I don't know. I don't know. I thought about her too the other day when I was going to the bank because I always had to drive past the nursing home. I did go visit her in the nursing home, but um, this was like ten years ago. Oh wow! I mean, if she was still living, she'd be in her nineties now. Oh, well, what happened to the house? People living there now. Oh, but I mean, it, <laughs> I don't know. If Bitch, I'm thinking this is a recent story. No, 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 no. no. This was like in. This actually happened in the summer of 2003. Ask me how I know. I'm not gonna tell you how I know. Because Beyonce came out with a new album. No, it, it happened. No, no, no. That wasn't your Beyonce came out the album, but it happened the week of the VMAs. 
when Beyonce performed Came Down Upside Down. Mm -hmm. I remember that so well because my mom cussed me out that week. You want to know why she cussed me out? Because I had locked myself out of the house and I had my neighbors give me a ladder and I climbed through my kitchen window. And my mom said, somebody could have saw you climbing through that fucking window <laughs> and breaking my house. Like, she cussed me yeah. out. I'll never forget that. Mm -hmm. Yep, but she was right though. Because I did it in broad daylight. You know, somebody see you climb through the window, get ideas and be like, oh, well, maybe I should do that. Okay. Mom said, don't you ever pop none of my fucking windows. If you lock yourself out, you sit on that porch and you wait until I come home. You think I climbed through any windows after that? Hell <laughs> <laughs> <Damn>, no. <laughs> Hell no. No, no, no. So. <laughs> <shut up. laughs> I haven't broken the window in so long. But we didn't have to break. I didn't have to break in it. The way my kitchen window was. It was in the summertime, so we had the regular window open, and then we had a screen in our kitchen window. So, you know, the screen, it was easily to push up, and so that's what I did. I had my neighbor, let me use your ladder. And he stood there and held the ladder for me like a dummy, and I didn't climb right through the window. But how she find out you got on through Because my stupid self told her. I told her. Because when I told her I was locked out, mind you, I told her I was locked out before I even thought about the ladder thing. So she probably thought that I was still waiting for her. So when she got home, she said, well, how you get in the house? I climbed through the window. You did what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, so I never do that again. <laughs> so we got a crisis going on in Philadelphia. Oh, we got more than and, and it involves <laughs> teachers, administrators, students, bad ass students. Yes, the neglect bad parents. parents. <laughs> Thirty seven hundred. We found out it came through my phone on Friday that the school district of Philadelphia will be laying off 3,700 employees. So we have 19,000, it's gonna go down to 16,000. And not only that, they're shutting down to close to 30 schools. And, and think about all the kids that are gonna be yeah, out. All the kids is gonna be out of teachers. Um, teach, some schools are closed and they're gonna be consolidated where some students might have to go into different neighborhoods and they're scared about that. And they're gonna be overcrowded be, schools. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot going on. And my thing is this, if parents, I got to get on the parents because I posted about it on Friday night. This story wouldn't be so bad if parents were more involved mm -hmm. in their children's education. Children, the parents only want to step up and say something when it involves their children being inconvenienced. Mm -hmm. They're being inconvenienced because now, oh, they got to go to a new school mm -hmm. or I got to pay for them to get on the bus to go to school. And it's just, and then you don't even want to go to a parent-teacher conference. You don't want to pick up a report card. You don't even go to home and school and associated meetings so the teachers can find out what's, you know, to meet the parents and, you know, know what's going on and everything. You don't even have that at all. Your children go to school hungry as hell sometimes. They don't have nothing to eat at home. And then, or if your children get in trouble at school, the parents call you at home and then you curse them out for letting them know wait, about wait, your child. Wait, let me tell you something. Let me show you. I'm going to show you something real quick. Let me show you something. I'm going to show you how my mom was when I was in school. Okay? When my sister and I was in school. I'm going to show you something real quick. Okay? You calling your mom? Yes. <laughs> so I can know. So y'all can watch this. See, I've been out of school for some time now, so I can laugh at her. What's Mom, what? remember when I was in high school and stuff? Right. What did you used to do with the teachers? Didn't you used to make sure you knew all the teachers' name and number? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm just sh making sure, because we talking about this. And you made sure that all the teachers knew who you were, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Why that? Because, but, Mom, <laughs> Mom, I just told you why. Yeah. My mom was the type of mom that even when I was doing good in school, mm -hmm. she would still call the school. And she wanted to speak to every last one of my teachers. You know what she would do? If you have any problem with my child, mm -hmm. call me at work, call me at home. <laughs> she would give them her cell phone, her work, and our home number. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the type of my mind, and I don't see that today. Mm -hmm. We just watched this special today with Diane Sawyer. This guy went to his daughter's parent-teacher conference to pick up a report card. 
This teacher said that out of 70 students, only one parent in two days came to the parent-teacher conference. Mm -hmm. Yep. What is, and then parents are so quick to go off on the teachers. Yeah, at a damn conference because this school got to get closed. Close. <laughs> well, now you're so concerned about the school getting closed, but you wasn't here for parent-teacher conference. I used to hate when my mom went to parent-teacher mm -hmm. conference. I used to love back to school night. <laughs> I was like, Mom, you got to come. My mom would take me to parent-teacher <laughs> conference. Which one is your teacher? <laughs> that one right there? All right, come on, let's go. Mm. Like, it was... You, me, me as a teen, not teenager, me as a, a child growing up, we had those parents there. You yep. had parents taking them <laughs> yes. to school, okay. parents taking them home. Yep. Parents, they had the after, was it, was it, home and school association, back to school nights. Mm -hmm. We, when everything was, William Dick was the best school I ever went to. We had fucking talent shows and shit. When the last time you heard a dude talking about we having talent show, Mind and you. you go and they invite you, because my niece they never tell me about no damn talent show. Every month at my high school we had um we had a a talent show um and then we would have a multicultural show with yeah. different people from different, different. like cultures mm -hmm. will perform and stuff like that. We always did that. But I just couldn't understand by watching the special that Diane Sawyer did right here in Philly at Strawberry Mansion. Yeah, she was on a couple blocks away from my house. I didn't even know. Mind you. So, <laughs> why she <laughs> was here. Here. She came to North Philadelphia. Here. <laughs> God dang, okay. For me, those camera crews broke up. For me. Yeah. But anyway, I don't understand. This school as big as strawberry mansion is and it's just like the parents in this neighborhood they are concerned about what their child is going to be putting on they concerned about how my child gonna look for prom mind you half the kids ain't even graduating you get prom, prom ready mm -hmm. they so concerned about all that s stupid stuff that they're not even bothered with even going up to the school for one night to sit with their child's teacher for an hour probably not even an hour just to find out how their child is doing in school. Mm -hmm. it's, that is beyond, and I felt, so what was the principal's name? Uh, oh. And she, she looked, looked like Aunt Viv. Viv. Okay, <laughs> she did. She looked like Aunt Viv with Joe Clark's attitude. Yes. Okay, because she, but you know, I, I, I take my hat off to her because she was so passionate about getting these kids on the right track. She wanted them to be on the right track. She wanted them to do good in school. She didn't want them to go down a path of destruction. Mm -hmm. And it was like, this teacher, and like she said, there was a lot of principals who didn't even want to take that job of, no, of working at Strawberry Mansion. But she took it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for her to do that, and then for these parents to not even come to even say thank well, you. Welcome, I am so well, Welcome her. It was just like, oh my God, like, I couldn't believe what I was watching, but it's it's the <laughs> truth. When she was reading um, Pink Slips. Yeah. What the kids were saying to the teacher. Yeah. Is anybody that they call you a dick eater or you drawn and all of that? Um, it's just. In your face. Yeah, and then they had a, they wrote her a damn threatening letter where they was going to kill her and everything. Parents, you have got to do better. You have got to stop having kids if you can't take care of them. You need to be more involved in your children's mm -hmm. life. Your children should not have to feel like the world is on my back. Mm -hmm. I got to I gotta be the one to make money to help my family. Like that little boy, I felt so bad for him. I did too. I felt so bad for that but little boy. But you know boy. he's going places. Yeah, yeah. You can tell that he's going mm -hmm. places. Because he said, this is not how I'm going to live. And, you know, you would just... You would just want to push your children to do better than you so you could get out of this neighborhood. Like, if your child sees you working hard at your job to get where you need to be at your job, I'm going to work hard at what I need to do at my school. And I'm going to get these grades because I see you already struggling. I don't want to make you struggle to pay for my scholarship. I mean, pay for my college tuition and everything. I'm just going to go in and get a damn um, scholarship. All these kids want to do is fight, fight, fight. They say, oh, you bumped me, so I want to fight. Oh, you spit on me. That's the nastiest thing you can do to anybody. I will fight you if you spit on me. Don't you do it. Wait a minute. But the fact that these cameras was there, and, and they were still they, fighting. Yes. Fighting in front of the camera. The girl was like, that's Diane. Leave on But they didn't know Diane. So it, they don't know she had an iconic interview with Whitney Houston 10 years ago. No, they don't. And they I was in high school when that happened. Yes. You know how? Because when we went to school the next day, we was all talking about it in the visor. 
You sure was. That interview happened in 2002, and I'm not going to tell you how great I was mm. when, that, when, that, when that interview took place. Yeah. But let's just say yeah. I was in high school. Yeah, and, and you know what? I, the children, yeah. you young children, because I know as teenagers that watch the scripting show, you have got to know when to turn down a fight. Fuck all that peer pressure or, ooh, you a punk because you didn't fight somebody. You can't do that. You can't have all these suspensions on your record. You you want to have good grades and you want a college to look. See, I ain't been to college, but I know that's what they do. They look at what they you look done at stuff in like school. That. Yes. Like, oh, oh, you like to fight. Oh no, there ain't nobody. Because we don't here. want nobody here. And then I felt bad for the young lady who couldn't. She got accepted to college, but couldn't afford yeah, couldn't to afford pay. It. Like to get yeah. just five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, to some of us, we'd be like, well, we'll pay that, you know. But then, just thinking of her family circumstances, they probably couldn't afford to. Give up five dollars right now. Five five dollars. Five hundred dollars right now. You know, I felt really, really bad for those who actually went or going to Strawberry Mansion to learn. Yeah. Opposed to those who are just going there just to fight. But I don't understand. It, it, it really is it's really see you could blame the children all you want. I, I just gotta keep going back to the family. It parents. starts at home. It starts at home. And it's your mother. See, my mom shouldn't have to do all that threatening and shit. What does the Bible say? Train them in the way you want them to. Do. That's right. I didn't. But see, I didn't have to. See, first of all, I was trying not to get a slap. Okay, not let alone a beating. I was trying not to get slapped. I got my beatings when I got them, and I deserved my beatings. But I wasn't a bad child in school because I knew. I knew how to make honor roll and get student attendance. Perfect, because all I had to do was fucking go to school mm -hmm. and do my homework. You know what the fuck I did, bitch? I used to do my homework on the weekends. Like, because I already, the teacher would give us the spelling words. We already know what the spelling word words for next week. So I already did my homework 10 times each. We had to write the words 10 times each and learn the definitions. Um, Friday come, we had to know the definition. She'll tell you the definition. You got to tell her what the word is. And that was it. And I would always get 100. And she always said, keep doing what you're doing. You keep getting what you get. So I knew if I keep doing this shit, I'm going to keep getting what I'm getting. So I had honor roll. I took away all the words from elementary school. When I got to high school, I fucked up a little bit because I was like, fuck this shit. I'm doing me, blah, blah. Because when you got to high school, you really started yeah. doing what you want. And then, mind you, when I got to Omni, because I went to Omni High School, uh -huh. oh, yeah, I, I was know, like, you was doing what I you was doing. like, oh, fuck you. I was like, <laughs> and getting what he was getting. But see, the thing was, <laughs> the thing was, I got bored with that because I'm like, I'm learning stuff that I already learned in elementary school. What are y'all doing? And, and I only high school they yep. teach you stuff they like that? They teach me stuff that I learned in elementary school and middle school. Yeah. And, and then another problem was I went to Omni because they had a good medical program. And I thought I was going to be a doctor. Look at Look at John Chacha and look no. at Shirley Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Shirley Rock. She tried it. Where's that? Let me see what she's like. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. But yes, it absolutely can be done. It is going to be very, very difficult. If it took three weeks to a month, I wouldn't be surprised. It's going to be no easy thing. Well, uh, let me go back to Gene Gazars for a second. <laughs> three weeks to a they month. They're going to stop switching this camera. Uh, you have a jury selection for <laughs> six people We've and two me. alternates? We've heard one to three weeks, but, but what she's saying is so right. You've got to read between the lines here. This this woman said she only heard of the case Don't three to four times, but yet she was in the case as it went on with the question. Yeah, and, and that's what I'm wondering about Judge Hatchett. People say, oh, I have no opinion. That's like people saying, well, I don't, oh, I have no biases. You know, they do studies in, in, in school where they ask like, like this. That's how she says. And they all say, we don't have any biases. And then when they finish the test, yes, they do have biases. So how do we how do we distinguish between somebody saying, I have no bias, and somebody is truly not biased? Hurry up. Well, I so, I the <laughs> so, yeah, so wait. Let me get back to these parents. Parents, I'm going to need y'all. You know, I was an her and her husband, Shirley Ralph, when they came to uh, my old job. Of course. You gotta wait till they zoom out when they pan out with her hands on her hips. Look at her! <laughs> <laughs> Look at her! <laughs> Look at Dana Jones. That's the original thing. Yeah. <laughs> the ah. comes in, and because oh. this has been so much publicity on this case before the trial starts they even now we're talking about it trying to get um, went down a went jury down panel he, he went down. this is going to be a challenge but i will tell you jane there are other options it can be moved to a different venue That's it may take a long time i agree it needs to take as long as necessary right. Okay, John Lindman. Yes. Well, this jury potentially could be the makeup of the jury, could be so important 
in the verdict that if it takes three or four weeks now to find an impartial jury, that's okay. Let it take as long as it takes because I'm telling you, the makeup of this jury is going to play a huge role in the verdict. Absolutely. Yeah, but isn't that contradictory? I mean, saying, well, you could find a totally impartial jury, but, uh oh, but by the same token, the makeup of the jury is going to be inside the case. You can't have a big Nancy Grace is off the air? No, no, I'm upset. Where's the attorney for the then teenager's family, Trayvon Martin family? Oh, 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 and it looked kind of Asian a little bit. <laughs> oh, uh, um, which part? Like, George Zimmerman. He looks Asian, but he's Hispanic. Look how small he was back then. Yeah. Well, you know they're making him wear a vest in court. Yeah, they are too. But his face is fat too. But they are making him very very vest, so they don't want to going in the shop. They see they don't want. What he did to Trayvon happened to him. Right. That's basically what it is. Ain't nobody coming to no court no, with no gun. You can't. Shit, shit. You, you, you better well, look, wait a minute. You you better look at YouTube and see all those courtroom fights and all those people bringing those guns in there. You crazy no, thing. Well, I know in Philadelphia you can't get in no Well, you know in some places you can. can. Some places oh, you can. They need to um, be strict about that, bitch. You gonna come in, somebody coming in and with a gun. shoot somebody. Oh, they're going to play. They say take your cell phone, your keys, take everything out your pocket yeah. before you even go into anybody. Let me tell you something. You, you know somebody you can still get in the courtroom. These people still walking in these schools nowadays with these fucking guns. Yeah. They, it don't make no sense. Didn't somebody just go into shoot school the other day and start yeah. shooting up? Yes, that was on campus somewhere. Yeah. You what know? is going on? I don't, I don't know what's going on with the kids. <laughs> going on. I don't know what's going, going on with the parents. parents. I'm just going to need to <laughs> consult with all the judges to find out what's going on. Open these because, all up on her life. Yes. Plan. I want to know That's what, what goes on in the head of a Philadelphia parent. I want to know. When you when your child go out the door, what do you think? Do you just don't give a damn? Do you think they're going away and they're getting babysit at school? Do you care about their grades? Do you care about anything? It's like the black students here, they are doing so bad in school. They can't read. They can't spell. They don't know their math. They can't subtract. Like, what the fuck is going on? But it's not all the students see, here. And you know what? I'm mad at the city of Philadelphia, too. Because the school is in a 300, has a $300 million uh, budget gap. Why can't we get money from the Pennsylvania Lottery? Why does it always have to benefit all the Pennsylvanians? Why can't we have some of that money go towards these damn students? And why can't we get money from the casinos here in Philadelphia? Why can't some of that money go towards or the school district? these big shows that they yeah. have, these concerts that they yeah. have. And you know what else is crazy? If you got $400 million to build a motherfucking prison, two prisons in Pennsylvania, that money can be going to somewhere, something better. How about hiring people to talk to these students to get them out of not selling drugs and men and, and, and using that money for mental also program. pay people to mentor these students. Also, how about hiring teachers who are willing to teach and not or it's just hard. there for a paycheck? It's hard for people that's willing to get a paycheck because they gotta fight the students and they gotta fight the parent at the same fucking time. It's tough. I, w I used to want to be a teacher and I, st I still do want to but it's just so hard when you don't even have the parents willing to break down and understand that yes my child is a shit starter or my child is a troublemaker and I'm going to make sure I do whatever I can to make sure my child doesn't disrupt the class because one disruptive person can disrupt everything mm -hmm. and a teacher's trying to teach and you and you just can't kick a kid out of class anymore. Okay. And all of that suspension shit, I've never really understood the suspension thing because no matter how bad a person is, you don't want them to be dumb and you don't want mm -hmm. them missing school. So keep the in-house suspension thing going on where they go they, this is where they'll be in a classroom all day. They can't go to lunch. They eat lunch in the damn classroom. That's what they did with in-house suspension. That's a I don't school. think they do that anymore. No, I don't think they yeah. do either because I remember I had a few in Yo, I know you had in-house suspensions. Mm -hmm. You look like one of the girls and that started shit. I beg your pardon? Yeah. Watch how you talk to me. Oh, don't try to get all offended. You well, I'm not offended, I'm just saying. Uh, you already told, told me how you did. How I did what? How you did in school. Because you still do it. Yeah, just like you still do what you do when and you were in school. Do. All right. <laughs> keep them legs closed to marry men. Oh no, I don't keep my legs closed. You keep we not. <laughs> and I know you don't. So you meant to say I don't keep them. I you know. You I, I keep them open when I want to. Uh, I open them and close them when I want. It's my money. Oh, what's this on? It's my day. I'll do what I want. So, is that Kim? No, that's my. my <laughs> she got cakes a little bit. Mm -hmm. At the cake cafe, um, venture. That's because she's arts. Anybody who arches their body like this will have cakes, I'm including you. Oh, um, go ahead. <laughs> well, you go ahead and arch your back. No, I have them without them being arched. <laughs> but that ain't no thing to me. I ain't worried about that. <clears throat>
So anyway, um, so yeah, so we, we're, yes. yes, the That's iOS beautiful. 7, yes, let me tell y'all, I'm excited about the iOS 7, I'm not too excited about Xbox, <laughs> Xbox, we'll talk about that, but I don't understand what's going on with, with, it, with your system to be always connected to the internet all day, who is this fighting, Just and who that, uh, where is this, because nobody's sitting, nobody, you like this, she's like this, she's like that. This is a North Philly. It's it, no, it ain't. Yes, it is. They said it around the corner. <laughs> Who's Prince Smart? Just, what's the name? From Philly. He's from Philly. It's no, like, no, you don't know him. I know a lot of people now. We know. Right around the corner. At, what's the name? What's those projects around the corner? Johnson Holmes? Yeah, Johnson Holmes. Who fights with their bra on the... <laughs> That's my... See, people be... <laughs> See, I'm, I'm glad I don't get into fights. I might curse you out, but I ain't got time for no fights. <laughs> but Kevin, she didn't just have on a bra. She had on the whole stocking cap. No, she had a bra and all the stocking cap. She was ready for... Whoa! <laughs> and all that gray hair under there. That's somebody's mouth. Oh, they didn't take no more pictures. What happened? Let me go back. What did he say? What happened? Cracking up. No, I want to know what See... <laughs> This is what I'm talking about. This is in Philadelphia. This is your city. No, this is your city. And then it's right around the corner from your house. That's all right. Johnson Homes. Yes, this, this area getting kind of dangerous. Some girl got shot in the it's eye a, yesterday. It's a what? She got shot where? Here. In the eye around the corner. Then the cops, oh my God, the cops were circling. I said, you know I'm trying to sit outside. And I, I barely sit outside. But I'm sitting outside and I'm seeing cops just circling, circling all around. around. Yeah. Like, what the fuck happened? They told me the girl... Like a teenager got shot in the eye yesterday. In the eye. That's I hate I hate hearing myself in the eye. But yeah. Yeah, and love and hip hop is about to come back. So in the eye? Who who shot her? A straight bullet. A straight? See, this is why I'm saying sitting next mm -hmm. to this window when we be hearing uh -uh. those noises, cause straight bullets come right through. You can be anywhere and get hit by a straight bullet. You sure can. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm just saying, this is anywhere. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'll be praying for that girl, cause yeah. in the eye, you know, why you shoot somebody? That ain't, that ain't no straight bullet. That's deliberate. Um, they, cause it's so stupid around the project. I don't even go around there no more. I would hope not. I don't have no reason to go around there. Mm -hmm. I see him when I see him. Hey, and I keep it moving. <laughs> hey, hey. Like, oh, I see you be doing stuff on YouTube. Yes, that sure do. Hey, <laughs> keep, keep it moving, the fuck okay? <laughs> cause if I can, <laughs> if they call me and tell me. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, 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 I will pray that nothing ever happens to me, but that is just crazy. Like and she was regularly out there fighting with that bra on. Yes. Okay. Child, Michelle, what's going on? She ready. We're going to get ready to go. <laughs> but I want to say thank y'all for watching, and we'll be back later this week with a new video. And hopefully we'll have some more information on Kelly Rowan. Talk to y'all later. Peace. Oh, you didn't even get a shout out.